Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of the Elementor Distribution Unit Operation tutorial. In the first part we defined the unit operation model input sheet, output sheet and the distribution sheet. Uh, in this part we will define the controls and make some flow sheet adjustments to finish the model. So we start by making some controls. So in this case, uh, currently we have a system that doesn't satisfy the 3% excess oxygen amount. Now it's 13.42 here. And also it doesn't satisfy the heat balance. We start by making the oxygen percentage control. So we write title here, oxygen to percentage. And then when we write into this white cell, then it will open up the rest of the cells for editing. This process unit will come automatically. We don't have to change that. A measurement unit, we select percentage. And then we have the set point. So the set point measured and value cells are the most important cells of the control definition. In the set point we put the value that we want to reach. In this case we want the excess oxygen percentage to be 3 so we will insert 3 over there. Then the measured cell. So as you can see the HSC already asks for a reference here. In, in here we should have the reference to a cell that measures the current value of the excess oxygen. In this case, we can find it in the output sheet in the process gas O2. And now it's 13.42 and we will make the link by pressing right click and then copy cell reference and then going here and paste cell reference. Okay, so now the link is established and uh, the measured cell always follow the output cell, uh, the output sheet's uh, O2 cell. Okay, then what value will we adjust so that this value approaches this value? We will adjust the air feed and uh, measurement unit is normal cubic meters per hour. And we get the value from the input sheet here. We copy this cell reference and we paste it here. And then uh, sometimes we need to adjust the maximum limit that this can reach and the minimum limit. But in this case, maybe these are all right. Uh, we don't need to usually adjust this step amount. And uh, for the control method, Usually the default uh, method is fine. So we can change from here, we can change whether we use PID control, which is only for the dynamic, or if we use the automatic, which is not really nowadays used anymore. So usually this manual choice is best for the static models. We can set the control off or on. Uh, we can set the max limit of iterations, this type tells whether the control is internal or external. External means that uh, some of one of these, either of these references comes from uh, another unit. And then we have the operation. In the operation, we have few different ways to solve this control. So we got this default tangential, which is pretty good usually. We got the directly proportional, inversely proportional. In the case that uh, you know that by raising this value, this value also becomes higher. It's a very simple one. And then we have adaptive slow, which uses the uh, Newton method uh, with some uh, adaptive techniques. But uh, usually it's not the optimal choice. You can try to change to that if you think that tang tang tangential is not finding the right solution. 
And then we also have this Newton Rapson method, which is uh, rather new. So the Newton Rapson method allows you to uh, solve also multiple controls at the same time. And it use, uses Newton Rapson method to do that. So I select that one and then I run the model and I can see that, okay, simulation ready, some warnings and the warnings concern the heat balance, which is not set yet. But uh, as you can see now, the excess oxygen percentage measured value is exactly the set point value. If we go to the output sheet, we can see that, okay, now it's the value that we want. Next, we will create the heat balance control for the system. But before we go into that, we forgot one thing. So we will set the output temperature for the process gas and hematite pellets. In this case, we, in this example, it wasn't said what it should be. So we put some uh, reasonable value there. And then we do the heat balance control. Measurement unit kilowatts and uh, it should be zero. And we get the reference from the disk sheet. And if we have this sort of internal reference, which means that it is referring to a cell inside the same unit, we can use direct Excel reference. It works the same way as copy cell reference and paste cell reference. However, if you have an external reference from another unit, then you have to use these copy and paste cell references. Okay, and then uh, we control it with the call feed, tons per hour, and uh, we get the reference from the from here. And uh, press enter, increase the maximum, and I will use the I will use the Newton Rapson method here too. Uh, then these controls will be solved simultaneously. Otherwise, if I don't use this method, then they will be solved from left to right, right one by one. Okay, and then I calculate and uh, it finishes the calculations and seems that a solution was found. Now if we take a look at the unit, we can see that all the balances are correct and, uh, and the values here are what we want and then we have this kind of coal and air feed to the system. Uh, we can see that there are no errors, so this unit should be ready now. I can now change the input value of the magnetite ore, for example, and calculate again. And the system is again calculated. I can visualize, uh, let's say, amount, and I can see those values here. I will finalize the flow sheet by creating some stream tables. Uh, for the amount and for the temperature. I will assign it for all streams and uh, use the value and header table system, apply and then create this. Okay. And uh, that's it. I, I think we are ready with our model. And this concludes the part two of the shaft furnace and elemental distribution model. Thank you for watching.